What's good YouTube? Welcome to another Small James coding tutorial where today we're going to be looking at how we can make our very own Python package with an associated CLI tool, command line interface tool, so that you can install it from PyPy, you could use the CLI tool, you can import it as a module to a different Python package, you can do just about whatever you want with it using this particular setup. Now in this tutorial we're also going to look at how we can configure a class instantiation for our API so that you could accept an API key and do all sorts of things, use methods and call it in any particular file. It's just going to be absolutely excellent. So if you enjoy the video, please like and sub. Let's get into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is start off in a directory and open up my Visual Studio Code editor inside of that directory. Now in here, what I'm going to do is create a folder and this folder is going to have the name of our API code, whatever you want to call it. So in this particular case, I'm going to call it James is cool. And now what I'm also going to do is make a new file called setup.py just in here. And this is where we're going to configure our API. So in this particular file, the first thing we're going to have to do is import setup tools, which should already come with Python. And we're going to import setup and find packages. Now after that, what we're going to do is, is call the setup method, open up a circular parentheses, and in here we're going to provide a whole bunch, a whole series of arguments. So the first one is going to be name is equal to, and we're going to call it James is cool. The next one is going to be author equals James. The next one is author uh, email. So this is for like if the person wants to contact you about your particular package. So I could call it banana at telephone.com. Then we have, I forgot a comma just in there. The next one is description is equal to nice. Then we have, you can give it a long description, you can give it a long description content type. Another important one is version that's going to be critical. So I'm going to go 0.0.1. Then we're going to have the license is equal to license.md. It can just be any license that you want, but you'll have to provide that in the file. Then we're going to have a URL and that would be for your website URL, but we don't have one. Now this is where it starts to get important. So the first one is going to be packages and we'll see how this works a bit later, but we're just going to use the find packages method. And in here, we're going to say include equal to another circular parentheses, and we're going to give it some names of the files to include. So the first one is going to be, I'm just going to call it James dot asterisk. And the second one is anything inside of James's call just like that. So that's going to be the folder directory and this is going to be a file that we create soon. Now that's going to be to include the package in our API. The next thing is going to be to configure the CLI tool. And so for that, we're going to have to provide it entry points and that's actually going to be a curly parentheses. And in here, what we're going to do is provide console scripts just like that. Open that up in a square bracket. And in here, we're going to say, James, which is going to be the CLI command that activates our CLI. And then what we're going to do is say it's equal to James is cool dot underscore underscore main underscore underscore and then call main just like that. And so essentially what this says is when we call James from the console, we want to go into James's school directory and execute the main function or the main method inside there. Now, after the entry point, we're just going to set a Python requires, which is a version thing. So Python requires equal to greater than or equal to 3.6. And then the other thing we're going to have is an install requires, and this is just going to be uh, an array or a list of any packages that are going to be required to be installed inside of your API. So in this particular one, 
let's say we were using python.env file, so we would say python.env and we would specify that particular package. Another common one that you might encounter is requests if you were making requests from your file. Now there are other things you could do including like packaging information or JSON files with that but we're not going to stress about that. Leave a comment down below if you'd like to see something like that. But now that we have the setup tool we can come into our James's cool package and make a new file and in here I'm going to say james.py and this is where I'm going to write all of the Python code to handle my particular API. Now we're also going to need some other files in here. One is called underscore underscore main.py and you'll remember that from our particular console script just here, this particular file. And we'll also need one more that's underscore underscore init.py underscore And that is just going to be, these two files are just going to be important to let our system know that this is a package that can be installed. So the first one that's good to configure is the init.py and this is just going to give us some import syntax sugar that makes importing these files a little bit sweeter. And so in here we're just going to say import James from James and we'll see how this works momentarily. If we just save that file now this is for the class instantiation that we're going to set up in james.py because we're going to want to set up a class so that the user can import that class and instantiate it with their API key and then call any particular methods from that one instantiated class. Now so if we come back into James this is where we can define all of our things. So we're going to start off by instantiating James as a class just like that and the first thing we're going to do is say def underscore underscore init self comma API key. And so the API key is going to need to be passed into this particular method. So in here we can just say self dot API key is equal to the API key that gets passed into that class instantiation. And now after here we can define a method. So we're going to call test self and in here we're just going to print self.api key just like that. So these are going to be the two methods for our particular API for the minute. So that's going to allow this file to work correctly and we will still see how this works in a minute. But the last thing we're going to do is configure the CLI tool because we're going to want to test the test method from the CLI tool. And it's actually extra convenient because developing the CLI tool and the code for it allows us to actually import the package that we have used to import the module that we have just created and that class instantiation. So in here in, in main.py is where we can set up our CLI functionality. And so we're going to do that by starting off by importing sys and we're also going to import our new package. So that's going to be from James is cool import James just like that and so this little sugar in here is going to allow this syntax to work correctly and now what we can do is define main open that up and in here we can start doing whatever we want so the first thing we're going to do is say args is equal to sys dot arg v and now we're going to just print all of the args that we pass into this particular function. So now we should be able to come into our terminal in this particular folder and write pip3 install dot. And that installed our API that we have just created and now we have a build folder for that particular API. And so I should be able to come back into my terminal in here and type James and execute that. And we can see that the file actually ran, however this import statement is incorrect for some reason. And so in this particular case the reason I get, keep getting this error is because I've made a small mistake. The whole point of this is that this is actually the module name. So in here when I say import from James it should actually be James is cool import James and now we can update that by reinstalling our local package 
And now when I come into our terminal and type James, we can see that everything works. And we actually printed the command line. So now if I type James hello, we can see that we're getting the system arguments into our package, which is super cool. I can type James hello banana. And once again, we get all three of those arguments. So one thing that's pretty common to do is since we don't really need that first one, you can just go one dash like that. And now when I rerun this particular thing, we just remove this first entry in the list, which we don't actually need. So now that you have these commands, you can do just about whatever you want. But in our particular case, we're going to set a flag and we're also going to set a an API key. So in this particular case, it's going to have two options. So the first thing we're going to do is set up the dot H. So we're just going to say if dash H in args, that just means we want a help and we're just going to print triple, triple thing. So we can go into a new line and in here, we're just going to say there is no help. So now if we reinstall this, we can come back in here and I can type James dash H. So we would expect that argument in that line to get executed. And so now we can see that there is no help. So that's kind of fun. And now the next thing we can do in here is just set a variable that's called API key. And we can say that's equal to none. And we can say if dash K, which is going to be the flag that we use for the API key in args, then what we want to do is instantiate our class. So what we're going to do is say, let's say James is equal to James. So we're instantiating our class for our API and we can pass in the API key, but first we have to define it and we can say that the API key is equal to args and we say args.index, we get the index of the dash K, that particular flag, and then we just take the next one because it's going to be the next entry. So we just add one. So now I should be able to print the API key and what I can do is take this line down onto the main syntax and just say else return print no API key provided. So now in here, instead of passing that, I just pass the variable like that. And now we've instantiated that. And so I should be able to call james.test and see if that test method works. And in here, what we can just say is print the API key and so the API key should indeed come through. So I install this file once again. So now we can come into here, we can clear everything, we can test James dash H. So the H works, no API key provided, that's super cool. So now I could provide a dash K and then I could put in a string and say, hello underscore banana. And now what we would see is we get the API key provided and we consoled it twice because we print it here and we also print it just here. So we could actually change this just to say the API key is space just like that. And so once again, if I do this once more, we can run that and we can see that the API key is hello bananas. And so just like that, we have seen how we can develop an API key we can see how we can import packages. So if a user were to install the API, all they would have to do is use this same syntax here to import our package and instantiate the class just like this. So they don't have to use the CLI tool. This could just be a regular person's Python file. If they wanted to run our logic and instantiate our class, let's say we have some methods in here that do some particular functionality, they can just import our package instantiate it with the API key and then call the methods as required. And they can do this as many times as they want. They could say James two is equal to James API key. And suddenly we can see the benefit of instantiating a bunch of them just like that in this class based logic. But anyway, that's pretty much it for developing an API with a CLI, a Python module that you can import, do just about whatever you want with. If you've enjoyed the video, please like and sub super appreciate it. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.